Hey howdies, welcome to my channel. My name is Hepmas Tom and thank you so much for clicking on today's video. Today I'm actually getting ready to go somewhere. So the mood is frantic because did I give myself enough time? No, I did not. I have some new things for us to look at and play with together. If you missed my live stream on Wednesday, that's fine because I'm gonna basically talk about the same things. Also, the likelihood of a contact popping out of this left eye, very likely. Bad things happen to good people and I am a good person. I just have to admit that. Oh my God, am I bleeding? Linda, listen. Also, nails, ooh. These ones are from Glamnetic. This is the Unicorn Tears shade. Something's happening with this eye. Something's happening with this eye. Something's happening with this eye. I put a contact in this eye and then I put a contact in my other eye. <laughs> Let me just go to the banal steps of putting in contacts. If you're not a contact wearer, I don't know if other contact wearers do what I do, but like after I put my second contact in, I like look at something. Now I have the same prescription in both eyes. That's a blessing that not everyone's so lucky. Some people have to really pay attention about which contact goes into which eye, but I do not. So I looked at the wall and I couldn't see. And so I do a, and I was like, I can see. And then I looked out of my left eye and I was like, I certainly cannot see. Tiffany was down here. Tiffany had a frantic day at work. They were telling me about that while I was trying to figure out my eye situation with these nails. It all comes full circle. I have no idea how many contacts are in this eye because I don't think that one fell out of my eye, but I certainly couldn't see out of it, which means it might be under my eyelid. Scary stuff, scary stuff. I'm very hardcore. <laughs> when I tell you I don't have time, <laughs> like I don't have time, I don't have time. I'm going to like a gay, gay, gay bar. I'm going to gay happy hour. There's this thing that happens in Pittsburgh. Well, I don't even know if it happens anymore. There's the G2, the H, the G2, H2, which is the gay guy happy hour. It seemed mostly like older men, like older gentlemen, sextagenarians. Is that what the, cause like, I know if you're like in your eighties, you're like an octogenarian. Six be sextagenarian. I've only, I think I've only used once on camera. I'm gonna be using the Yucca palette. Something happened with this eye. All the contacts need to stay in my eye until it's over if there is more than one. So the only reason I know about the G2H2 is one time I was at a gay bar where the G2H2 was happening. So I was participating in happy hour. But the bartender was like, are you here for the G2H2? And I said, excuse me, the H1N1. And he was like, no, the gay guy happy hour. And I was like, I'm not here for that. And then a bunch of like old men came in and they were all drinking. Am I popular with young gay men? No. Am I popular with old gay men? Yes. And I didn't, I was not, you know, this person whenever this particular event happened. I was a little more, not trying to appear straight, but like a, a little more like concerned with masculinity at the time. So I was, I, I think overall more appealing, the gay guy happy hour demographic. One man did say to me that I had very inviting legs. I'm gonna keep it simple because we don't have a lot of time. I wanna use Plantasia on my lids. I haven't used it on my eyes yet. I have used this palette a few times. Do you know what I keep picking? Greens, of course greens. Maybe we're gonna do like an orange leaning look today. That sounds good. I'm about to dive in. We're going to a gay bar because here's the deal. I went to one Pride event. It was when I went to see Detox, which did I talk about that on my channel? I'm not really sure I did. I'm not gonna rehash it. You know, it happened like weeks ago. But yeah, I saw Detox earlier in the month. It was the first weekend of Pride and that was a long time ago. Time? Where's it going? Can someone explain it? Don't explain time to me. If you know, you know. If you're a Patreon member, if you listen to the podcast, which if you have not been following the Queer Mind and Khakis podcast, and at one point, Initially, it was called, if we don't laugh, we'll die. And now we call it, there is something wrong with this eye. Can you tell it's irritating? We've gotten far enough into it where we jokingly called it Dumb Bitch Hour because Khaki said that to Kelly Gooch and Kelly Gooch said, is that the name of the podcast? And Khaki was like, no. But then we kept jokingly referring to it. This is, I'm going in now with this shade, this one, this one in the middle. I could tell you what it is, but it doesn't matter. I'm still on a good timeline. I'm not running late. I'm not running late. I'm gonna do my makeup as though I am running late. I'm gonna talk at the speed of light. So then we started jokingly calling it Dumb bitch hour and that is just the name of the podcast now we're trying to figure out how to transition it out of the patreon in a in a real way here's the thing we both want to do it we think that the more, more recent episodes have like the flow they have them they're like the moment you know like if you haven't sorry this is like an aside i'm not really trying to sell you on my patreon which i do have patreon.com slash home tom you can join in if you want if you don't want to that's fine and anyone who's part of the patreon gets the same benefits as everyone else i try to do two videos additional a month you have access to the podcast if i'm able to edit my content in a timely manner sometimes you get early access to stuff but what i do try to promise is just the two videos a month and well now the podcast is living there currently anyway we were talking about bringing it to 
the public. And then both of us were like, I was like, okay, so here's what we need to do if we're gonna start taking it public. We need to actually start caring about thumbnails, we're gonna have to care about SEO, and we're gonna have to care about, this is like all stuff that you don't need to worry about, but I'm just like, I'm explaining to you as to like, if you were waiting for it, like this is why we have to figure out the timing of all this, meaning who has the time. If you are interested in the podcast, there it is. But keep in mind, if you, if you have been part of the journey, that the first episode of that podcast was the first time that Kaki and I spoke to each other, not through like um like a text message voice memo back and forth situation. We had never talked. And so now we're we're finding our we, like our rhythm has been pretty found. Cause I think when you're at, when you first start podcasting as someone who's been on many startup podcasts, finding your flow is difficult because you're like, I don't want to overset my boundaries, but like the fact of the matter is both Kaki and I are people who talk over other people. At least we talk over each other. I talk over people all the time. Listen, sometimes people don't talk fast enough for me and I need to finish your sentence for you because you're not going fast enough and I know where you're going with this, okay? Did I even say what this palette is? This is the Yucca palette from Natasha Denona in case you don't know and now you know. Why are we six minutes into oh my your video? God. And yet you still Why? haven't asked everyone to Why? like, comment, and subscribe. Why? Why are you... you have to be Listen, more like Mr. No Beast. one subscribed after make we did this in the last no video and yet platform. here we are trying again. I from niche beauty content, but you still have to ask Listen, the people. And all I hear from you is excuses, excuses, whatever. I ask you to do talking one to thing me. for me, and you can't even do it. It's the only one video. Okay, 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 okay no, no, you stop make something, and I want to do this if again. I don't okay? ask, no one will. Oh, okay, hi. If you happen to be new to my channel, liking this video, that's great for me. Subscribing, cool. Ring the bell. That's I've been told I'm supposed to. Uh, oh. I hear you. Please ring the bell. That'll notify you when I post. And especially as my timing has been a little bit poor lately. That might be helpful for you to not miss an upload from me. These oranges are making my eyes pop. You know what's so funny is I'm in a rush, but I'm like so good at blending. I guess I am. And honestly, I deserve an award for that. One time when I worked at Sephora, I did win. This is gonna be really funny to all of you. This is gonna be so funny. I won the superlative because we did superlatives that year. I won sharpest wing. How many wings have I done on my channel since its inception? I don't know, less than 10 times. And I guess what, I always do it off camera or I speed through it and I don't talk because it's really hard for me. But just know that I'm also skilled at that. Did you guys see Colleen Ballinger's apology? Now, I'm, I'm not here to gossip. This isn't gonna gossip channel. But what if I was? <laughs> what if I did this? Like, what if this was my whole personality? I love drama videos. I do. I do. But I'm not gonna participate. Respect to those who do because you the push and pull of being a drama channel. I take it for entertainment value and other people take it seriously. The people take it seriously, meaning viewers of drama content take it seriously. Like it's all entertainment. Sometimes there are real people involved with the like real things. In the case of Colleen Ballinger, yes. Every time I'm like, I can't believe that that's a thing that happened. Whenever it comes to something on the internet, I'm like, why am I shocked? I'm not shocked anymore. I've lived through a gajillion once in a lifetime events, you know? So when I give up. I, am I shocked anymore? I shouldn't be shocked anymore. SCOTUS just today said, go ahead and discriminate against those homosexuals, those transes. You don't have to let them in your business. They're not protected by the law. Also, what a joke. You think I'm gonna pay my student loans back? I'm gonna die before my student loans get paid back. And like, that's just the truth, right? Like, I'm not gonna, unless my YouTube channel takes off in a really real way, sure, I'd be happy to pay them off. And I'm not saying that I don't want my YouTube channel to take off just so I can pay back my student loans. That sounds, what life if I, am I leading if that's what I'm living for? That's not what I'm living for. But what I'm just saying is like, I'm on like a, you know, a payment plan with them in a very real way, like a income driven based repayment plan. I'm gonna die before you get your money. What are we doing this for? I don't, I'm not gonna have kids. Well, I don't know. Is the government even gonna let queer people have kids in a, in enough time. So I, I can't, so that you can't even pass my debt on to anyone else. I mean, the child that lives here with me, he's not my blood, so he's not gonna take on my debt when I die. Anyway, I'm just saying, before we start complexion in a very real way, are we, or what are we doing contact? I know it's gonna happen. Um, after I'm done drinking today, after my happy hour when I'm taking my contacts out, there's gonna be three of them. Like I just know in my spirit that that is the truth. Do I wanna add something else on top of it? Yes. I'm gonna take Maker from the Earthborn Seeking Shifts collection. I'm gonna take a very fluffy brush get some on there. I'm just gonna sweep it on, but I'm gonna lean over because I don't have time to clean fallout up today. Okay, there's Naker on that eye. Yes, thank you. It's like, it like, 
it fits right in with this this color, the shade. It just is like, let me pump up the jam just like a little bit for you. Did I still just get Naker all over my, my face? Yes, I did. And it does feel as though my contact is gonna eject from my eyeball. If only one ejects, then we've won. We can leave the other one in there. If I can still see after one falls out, assuming that there is more than one in my eye. Did I not put in my allergy eye drops before I put in my contacts? Yes. Is the air quality outside in an ungodly dangerous zone? Absolutely. As I said, so many events that I have lived through, I'm not supposed to have lived through. I don't know why I was put in this timeline. As I said at the very beginning of this video, I'm a good person and I deserve nice things. And why aren't they being given to me? I just don't understand. Oh, I did want to say before before we get too far into this video as if I'm not completely done with my eye look. Thank you so much for your kind feedback on Monday's video, which was the, not, was it Monday? I think it was Monday. At Critical Sass, I worked really hard on it and it was nice to see that you really enjoyed it. One of two things that happen whenever I work really hard on a video. This is the Victoria Beckham Primer in Golden. It's the only primer I want to use right now. I have a concept for a video where I'm like, things that fast tracked it past the testing drawer. This is one of those things. This would be one, this would be an example. But you know, it's summertime. It's finally a summertime. And I say that, I know a lot of people consider like partway through May summer, but like the calendar is now set officially that we are in summer. One of two things happens when you work really hard in a video. Thing one, the desired outcome is you work really hard on it. It is received really well. How's my razor burn? Ooh, it's really irritated. Okay, we'll do some green color character. I'm only gonna do it on my, I'm only gonna do it down here though. I'm not gonna do it all over my face. I don't need it. Or the other thing is you work really hard on it and then it just flops. Like it doesn't resonate. The cry was heard. I, I hear you. When I put the poll up, overwhelmingly people said they would like to see Critical Sass pre-recorded. And that's great. I'm gonna keep doing it that way. I did try the Let's Play With Makeup Live. I'm wondering if, you know, I just need to come up with a different live format if I want to keep doing lives at all. And it's not that I appreciate every single person who comes out to, comes out to, that participates in my lives. I really do. I really appreciate it. It's not that I don't enjoy them either. I do like them, but they don't seem worth it on my end as a creator, if that makes sense. Because it's like, it counts as a day's worth of content. It's not additional. So like, perhaps, I mean, like what I could do is do a pre-recorded video that goes up earlier in the day and then we also have a live later. Or we could do critical SAS premieres in the evening. We could even do it later. We could do it like at eight o'clock and then we could do a premiere so we can all chat while it's airing and it's pre-recorded so we kind of have all the things. Let me know what you think about that down below. But like, I was very excited to see that you all received it so well. It did really well for me algorithmically. It did all the things that it was supposed to. I'm gonna just use the Givenchy concealer. I'm gonna start with my concealer today. I haven't figured out what foundation I would like to use. I might just use my Surat. Stick with what I know. I don't wanna do too many things that I'm not familiar with since I am going to be out tonight. I have tried things where they like flop. Now, sometimes, you know, when you're playing this YouTube game, you know whenever you put something up, like what it's gonna do. So although sometimes things surprise you and I'm not like really looking for like feedback about what you wanna see. My feedback mug is upstairs. I actually have been using that one for coffee. Not looking for feedback in this moment cause I just can't handle it. But it's just like, sometimes you try something and you're just like, this isn't gonna do well. And you like know that and then you're like kind of more okay with it. But sometimes you work really hard on something cause it seems like it's gonna, like I'm working. I started working really hard on a video and I'm like, I don't know how it's gonna do uh, with you. I don't know how it's gonna do past you. I uh, Meaning, you know, so people who are subscribed to me and like invested in what I do here. I know that a lot of you do participate and will give anything that I do a shot and I really appreciate that. You're a real one. I have the press on nails and then this packaging does not love press on nails. Okay, let's see if I can get anything out of this right now. <laughs> Another video that I'm slowly working on, this is not gonna come out anytime soon. This is something that I'm very like working on, but I'm trying a bunch of press-ons and we will, I'll come back at you. We're gonna talk about adhesives, application methods. I'm new to this, so I just, I'm gonna share my information with you. I'm not gonna push my nail on it because that's how I broke my last one. Although I guess if I break it now, I could just reach out and be like, <laughs> my book. I mean, I'm not trying to abuse my relationship with Surat. I'm not not trying to abuse my relationship with Surat. So this is the Dewdrop Foundation. It's in the shade 1.5. 
for anyone who's curious. Ugh, so good. Oh, it's just so good. Enough about content. We don't have to talk about content anymore. In a moment's time, we're gonna be talking about a, a new product. Also, I'm working on a contour video, but you're gonna you're gonna inter intermittently see the contour products as I use them. My plan is whenever I do the contour video, it will be more like a more fleshed out version of what I did with the foundations a couple videos ago, where I like tested all the foundations on my face. That video. It's gonna be more like that, but like more fleshed out. I know how I'm gonna do it this time, where that video turned into something different partway through. I know how I'm going to do it. Anyway, so you're gonna see some different contouring products throughout the next couple of, I would say, let's say couple of months. I am gonna use a new one today. I probably could continue getting product out of here for more, but like it's it's feeling like done. It's feeling like a little bit done. It's feeling like done. You know what I mean? I could really take the time and like really brush all this product out of here. It's not that I say that all this product, there's like not really much left. You know what I'm gonna be able to do a little bit better? I know I talk about accessibility quite a bit whenever, I, and I like don't have dexterity issues in my hand, but like, well, let me tell you, me with these nails trying to open things is, a, it's a Sisyphusian task. When I had on the long press-ons that were in the critical sass, like there's not like, there's like not that much in there. If you are a panner, would you call that done or would you still keep trying to use it? Anyway, we are at the step of contour. I have a new contour product. So if you watched my live, if you were part of my live or if you've watched the re-upload, you saw me use this. So this is the Victoria Beckham contour wand. What are they calling this? Contour stylus. I'm gonna be hashing some information in case you didn't watch the live, which is again, okay. It's really small. It's really small. There's not a lot of product in here. The packaging is nice. It's not weighted. It's not like, it's not super light, but it's not like super weighted, but it doesn't feel like it doesn't, it feels like it belongs in the Victoria Beckham world. If it was something that comes in the size of thing. Now I didn't try the eyeshadow sticks, but if they, if this feels like metal, it doesn't feel like plastic. It feels like um, a tin of some sort. Also, Stay tuned for my ASMR channel. I know that you know that I enjoy a Victoria Beckham product. Like if there is a brand that I would, and I don't ever want to claim a brand is my favorite, but if there's a brand that I have had a high success rate and enjoy quite a bit, Victoria Beckham's brand is is a, pr a brand that's like pretty solid and like I'm very interested in what they do most of the time. So they released this. This reminds me of this product from Burberry, which was the first thing I ever bought for myself to learn how to contour. Back in the day, I when I first was getting into makeup, I was in Chicago on a trip. I was buying up myself a Burberry scarf. I don't buy a lot of designer stuff, by the way, that makes it sound like I'm very casually just buying Burberry. I had been promoted and I had some money saved up and I went and just buy myself a Burberry scarf. So that's what I ended up doing. But when we were in Burberry, my friend wanted to check out the makeup. This was like before I was like super into makeup, but then the makeup artist was like, do you want to try some stuff? And I was like, yeah, sure. This was in the period of time where Kim, like it was Kim Kardashian's contouring world. You know, contouring was really popular, but it was much more severe. And so she used this Burberry contour wand on me. And I was like, oh, this is so easy to do. So. I'm very fond of a contouring product like this. However, I know that you in the comment section are going to roast it, but let me argue some things here. There are some people who find contouring very scary and doing something like this isn't for them. They're also not like sculpting, sculpting. They just need like a little bit, right? And I think that someone sent me, whenever this was about to launch, or I think it's been said that Victoria Beckham styled this after this Burberry product because she liked it. I'm glad that something like this exists. It's very thin. It's much thinner than, I had one of the NYX ones that was sent to me via Influencer. It's like very thin. It looks more like an eyeshadow pencil than it looks like a, we almost just lost, whatever, something almost just happened with this eye. I'm not gonna do like heavy, very heavy contouring. So I'm gonna take it. And this is in the shade Tavertine. So I'm just gonna do like a line here. I'm gonna do like a squiggle up here. And then I don't contour my nose. But if I was a nose contourer, I, this is a some, this is a product that I would buy specifically to nose contour because you really can't beat that. You really can't beat that. I would say that this is more of a bronzer color. So there's like a lot of warmth to it. So that also has to be your thing. But I, if I recall correctly, the Burberry one was like, like a cooled, a cooled brown. I only have ever applied this on the live. So we're just, I'm trying it again. I'm paying a little more attention. It's blending out very easily, that little line. Also, you know, went a little bit further than I was expecting. 
I don't know how much you're going to be able to like really see. It's, it's, it's subtle. So yeah, this is definitely for the people who are looking for a very specific or easy contouring experience. You are certainly paying for the packaging and branding with this and the convenience of it. But it's on this side of my face very softly sculpted you can tell that it's you can tell that there's some stuff happening on the side of my face that's not happening on this side of my face obviously i will reiterate all of this information whenever i do the like final contouring video the final the final piece i might keep some of the products quote unquote secret like you'll probably see me using them but i might not get too much into it i'm gonna reiterate that i know that this is not a thing that's for everyone it's expensive there's not a lot of product it's not gonna be for everyone but as someone who has gone through a couple of those those Burberry ones that they no longer make, I'm happy that there's something that I can buy like that again. I see a world that whenever I do my contouring video where I say that this, I'm going to keep it and I probably will repurchase it, but it's not going to be like my main contouring product. This feels like for, I'm thinking like, Whenever you want to be like the cool girl, easy breezy makeup, not too much contour, but you want to have a little bit of sculpt in your face, but you don't want to like try too hard. Those days. The days where you're like going to go see your friends and you're just like, I just need like a little help today with this little, little something. This is my like third time using this. And I used it on my live and I was hoping that more people on my live would have had experience with this product, but they really didn't. Even when I didn't have nails, I had trouble opening this like real trouble opening this. So this is the makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Enhancer, or Skin and Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer. The cream bronzer, this isn't the powder one, which I don't know what the difference in the names of the two are, because I think they kind of have the same name. Let me tell you about my experience with this, this far. Let me tell you, let me just tell you a little story. So for some reason, for the past two to three months, I've been thinking about this product a lot. Every time I see one of my friends use it on YouTube, I'm like, and it often ends up in people's like favorites or it like keeps getting in people's rotation. I know there's not a super ton amount of product in here. So people pan this a lot. And whenever they get to the pan, whenever they get to the end of it, they're like, man, this is like a really good product. And I was like, okay, so it's like, you know, this product's been out for well over a year, I think. I think, I think this product's been out for over a year. It's always done something for me. You know, it's like always like scratched a little bit of an itch. And a thing that I know about myself, and again, not looking for feedback down in the comments, a thing I know about myself is like, I get a little carried away with bronzer. Perhaps it could be helpful to me to have a bronzer that doesn't allow me to get too carried away, which it kind of sounded like what this would be. I, I'm confused. It's like so subtle that I don't know that anything is happening. I have the shade light. Now, I have had some people report back to me um, that they went a shade darker than they thought they were going to to have a more bronzy experience. But I do think that the next shade up might have been like a little warmer than I would like to go. Maybe it wouldn't look so great on my skin. Although the person who said this to me is my skin twin because they have the same Givenchy concealer that I have and I think they said that it worked for them. This product has so many ingredients in it. I'm not looking for clean. I'm not looking for fewer ingredients. That's like not a thing that I care about. But when I say that there were so many ingredients in this that it took up the whole back of the packaging, I was like, that's, that's a lot. That is a lot. That is not a priority to me. I just want to say that. So it's like skin enhancer. So he, whenever I hear me my brain skin enhancer would be like blurring makes your skin look better but i don't actually like the way my skin looks whenever this is on top of my skin some other people have also said to me that they like it for when they're not wearing makeup or like complexion products which you guys you know that's like not really my gig if i'm gonna bother wearing makeup i'm gonna like be wearing makeup i'm wondering with both the lack of product in like lack of physical product in this packaging plus like you can kind of just keep putting it on and it's like it doesn't take you too far right like i feel like i could just keep applying this and it would still look like it did after the first layer of it that's it that's i did i know that like something very faint happened but it's just like i don't always need my makeup to be like a lot and i'm like doing some self-reflection here because it's like i you know i like light coverage complexion products like I don't need to do a lot of work there's something about this where I just am like I don't understand the point with this I don't know like I put that on and I'm like did anything happen it reminds me whenever I put this on it reminds me of whenever I first tried the ritual defeat three drop foundation like the original version of it when I put it on my face and I was like 
I don't know that anything happened. And then I look back on the fudge, and I'm like, that looks really nice. I can tell it, like, made my skin look a little bit bronze, but it's just, like, it's, like, to me, it feels so subtle that, like, it's, like, almost, like, I'm not seeing it. It's, like, it feels like a trick of the eye. It feels like, am I gaslighting myself into thinking that something has happened, but, like, nothing happened? Let's use Cantaloupe from Surat. I'm ready to receive the gift of allowing myself to wear it. Not that I'm, like, saving it for special occasions, but, like, you know, sometimes you just, like, you're, like, oh, yes, my favorite thing. I wasn't expecting this look to turn out so orange. You know, I guess I didn't really know where I was headed. See, that's subtle, but it does something for me, you know? Like, oh, that does something for me. As with many Surat products, this this mechanism, I turn, I turn, nothing happens, then all of a sudden it's like gushing out. That's really the ticket. Like, that's just so beautiful. See? See, I just complained about the packaging. That happens to me like every time I use this. It's like not a blush I would like to waste, but I complain about dating apps all the time. And in fact, we briefly talk about dating apps in the upcoming podcast episode. Not like dating stories, but just like, I, I make like an exclamation about like how I'm not like ready to date because of like the way that opening a dating app makes me feel. Again, it, the whole episode's not gonna be about dating apps. And then I'm, I match with someone, like the, for the first time in months I match with someone. And then I open, I, play, I went through a couple of them and I matched with a bunch of people. And I was like, you heard me. Those dating apps heard me and said, throw them a bone. Oh, I hate to admit this. I think I'd like to use this today. A true sign of me maturing is me just admitting. I'm not gonna say that I was wrong about this, but like it has come in just way more clutch than I thought, than I thought it would. And like, I knew that I kind of liked it whenever I did the Charlotte Tilbury video. I couldn't have expected the amount that I ended up like actually using it. I wouldn't have been able to be like, oh wow, this is gonna be something that I utilize a lot. I still don't know that I like think it's worth the money, but like now that I have it and I like enjoy, I enjoy the using it, you know, and I've like allowed myself to say that and feel that way about it. It's like, wow. That's a nice product. You know what I mean? And I hate to admit that. I hate to admit that. This nail journey is like very fun. I'm having a lot of fun looking at styles. If you have any like press on nails that you like, here's what I have in my arsenal so far. I have a set from Static Nails. I have a set from Guanetic, which is these ones. And the set from Monday's video in Critical Sass. Those were from Kiss. So I found them at Target, but they seem to be a limited edition and I could not, even on Target's website, I couldn't find the style. So I don't know, but they, they did say, limited edition on the packaging, but I didn't look on Kiss's website because uh, something tells me that whatever is going on on Kiss's website is probably not gonna be fun to navigate. Just based on the way their packaging looks. Look at that, ugh, they're so good. I've been so happy to have nails again. Like, I was just telling Hacky a, a couple weeks ago where I was just like, oh, I just miss having acrylics. Now, it's not the same as having acrylics because I don't, I don't trust these as much as I trusted the acrylics. The person who did my nails back in the day, she was very talented and she started, she, she just opened up her own nail salon and she's just started charging herself, like honestly, probably what she's worth in the grand scheme of things. And it's too rich for my blood. But I will link her if you happen to be in Pittsburgh and you want to like get some really great nails. Her name's Shelby. She's so fantastic. She's like very personable. I do like miss her, but like she used to be very affordable for what she does and now she's like really charging quite a bit. Again, that's not slander. Get your coin. People are willing to pay that much and then you charge them that much. It's just a little too rich for my blood. But also I don't really like leaving the house. So having an outlet for me to like have fun nails, not as exciting as the nails that Shelby did for me, but like having an outlet for that, it's fun. The thing that is most exciting is that it takes, I don't know, like one tenth of the time to stick on press-ons that it does to paint my nails. And also when one of these like, you know, falls off, I just have to glue it back on, which takes a couple seconds, like a, a less than a minute. It's heaven to me. It's so good. It's so good. I'm gonna spray my face. In about a month's time is the Beyonce concert. I need to start listening to Renaissance again. I was thinking, you know, a little break from it, but I now need to like really force myself to learn all of the words. Uh, I know a lot of the words from the album, but I don't, I wanna like, I don't need to know like everyone, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna like, I don't wanna embarrass myself. Also, I've already spent more time on my makeup than I have expected to. When I was thinking about this look today, now that we have all this orange on my face, 
there's an eyeliner I would like to use. Oh my God, it's already on my table. This is from Colfi Beauty. I haven't used this in quite some time and it's a very good eyeliner. It's also a Kajal eyeliner. I'm not really sure what Kajal is, means, what does it do? But this is one of my favorite eyeliner formulas. Now, I really love the Victoria Beckham ones and I do think the Victoria Beckham ones are like actually my favorite, but these are really good. And I think hold up better in the waterline than the Victoria Beckham ones. I know some people don't have the best luck with the Victoria Beckham eyeliners staying in their waterline. They seem fine. They never like, they never do anything funky on my waterline, but these are really good. They, they stay put, they stay put. Um, I'm just going to put this in my waterline. I might use a little bit of cocoa on the top outer lash and just like deepen out what's happening here. But I do want this in the tight line and the waterline. If there's any time for the other contact in my eye that may or may not be there to pop out. It's going to be, it should be right now while we're doing eyeliner. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to apply this one. I'm gonna, I don't know. So this has been, this has been transferring on me. It makes my lashes too long and it touches above normally where my eyeshadow is. And then it will transfer. It only happens whenever it's like really muggy out and it is really muggy out because of like the fires and it's just it rain. It's just like really humid here right now. I'm having a mascara dilemma actually right now. All the mascaras in my possession, which I don't normally have. You know what? The Chanel's never betrayed me. So maybe I'll use the mini Chanel. The Lash Clash is really good for me. I really like it. But in the winter, and it's probably better for the winter time because when I'm sweaty, when it's gross out, it just doesn't do it. In my house, it's fine. But it's like if I am outside too long, it does the transfer to the top. Now it doesn't smudge down here. It doesn't like flake off or anything like that. It just makes my lashes long enough where they hit my brow bone and then it transfers. I don't think that's ever happened to me with the Chanel. So I think that's what I'm gonna wear tonight. Let's talk about a couple of other options I have. I have a couple mascaras open. I also bought the Tarte tubing mascara again. <laughs> but what I'm, I'm not gonna throw this out. I'm gonna do both eyes. Also, back to the Yucca palette, I'm gonna do an eye for an eye on it. I don't really know how to properly explain why I have it. Uh, I don't think I, do I need cocoa? It's always nice to do. Okay, I'm gonna add cocoa and then I'll come back to those other two mascaras. Don't let me forget. <laughs> Make sure I don't forget. Back to the mascaras. I, I did put a little bit of cocoa on. This one from Surat, it has fibers in it, but I was told that it's also a too big mascara. Now, Something funky happened, and I don't know if it was the smoky eye baton or this, but it was a mess underneath my eyes. Now, I've worn this since, but not for as long as I did on the day where that happened, but it happened really quickly. So it leads me to believe that the smoky eye baton was to be to blame, but I still am too nervous to wear this out. Makeup Forever. I actually really like this mascara, but, and this never happens to me, and I do think that a lot of what happens with mascara has to do with like the biology of your hair. Stay with me. The same thing as like the hair on the top of your head. I think people have different coarseness of eyelashes, different thickness of eyelashes. And I do think that people have problems with flaking, have problems with flaking probably because of how oily their eyelashes are or something like that. So I don't normally have issues with I mascara like flaking. Smudging, I have. I have had that experience but flaking, I've never had. This flaked. Now, it wasn't a lot of flakes, but whenever I, whenever I tell you, I looked in the mirror, I saw like one little flake and I was like, what is going on on this day? I have worn the Chanel out before and I've never noticed it transferring, so we're just gonna go with it. And the other thing is, something that happens whenever you get those like black dots above your eyebrow, no one ever tells you. You know, it's like you get home and you're like, how long has that been like that? We're not gonna be sitting outside, but you know, once you start drinking, you just start sweating a little bit, so. And then for lips, probably I'm just gonna go for one of the Merit lipsticks because they're just like easier to like manage. We'll stick with 1990. If I had more time, I would, you know, pick out my outfit and show you, but I don't think I have that kind of luxury. I'm gonna floof my hair, I'm gonna get dressed, and then I gotta get going. So if you happen to be new to my channel and you enjoyed today's video, I would love to have you subscribe, like the video, share the video, do whatever you wanna do with the video. Except leave a mean comment, don't do that. But leave nice comments, I do like that. Anyway, I appreciate you all so much for your time. I appreciate you so much for watching. Remember to follow your hoot, and you will find me. How long do you think it'll take me to put my earring in? Drop it down below, I'll time myself. Bye-bye! Right.